Welcome back to another CG Figures tutorial. In this video, I will show you how you can make simulated SEM images of polymer nanofibers. We're going to go ahead and start by hitting X to delete the default cube. We also don't need this light, but we are going to keep this camera. Now, this is a very simple thing to make. We're going to go ahead, hit Shift A, and we're going to come to Curve and add a simple Bezier curve. Now, I'll hit 7 on my number pad to come into top view, zoom in just a little bit, and I can see if I come down to the object data properties for the curve and open geometry, I have a few options. I'm going to bring the depth value up just a little bit, and you can see this is actually giving me a solidified curve or a tube, essentially. I'm going to bring the resolution just a little bit higher, between 5 and 6 is good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab into edit mode, and just hit S and X and drag this curve so that it is very, very, very long. I will then also right click and subdivide the curve and I'll do that one more time just so that I have a few more points that I could control if I wanted to. I want this curve to be nice and long. I'm then going to hit Shift D, Y, and just drag that out and that has duplicated that curve and I'll make this one a little bit different. So I'll grab any point there, lock it to this axis by hitting G and Y to move it. And once I've done this, I will go ahead and again, duplicate the first curve or duplicate the second curve. It doesn't particularly matter. And I'm just going to continue doing this for a little bit to give myself a few different curves that I could choose from. And I could grab any point here if I didn't want to grab those specific ones. It really doesn't matter that much. For the sake of argument, I'm going to say that three curves is fine for the figure that I want to make. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just drag over these three curves, hit M, and this is going to bring up this option, and I'm going to choose New Collection. Now I will call this Polymer Fibers, and hit OK. And you can see that all three of these Bezier curves have moved into this collection Polymer Fibers. That is fine. I'm going to now grab those, hit G and Y, and just move them out of the way of the main scene. To set up the main scene, what I'm going to do is hit Shift A, add in a very simple plane, tab into edit mode, right click and subdivide. And then I will actually go ahead and subdivide quite a few times. So let's say 20 times. That should be good for starting. Then I'll tab back into object mode, come to the modifier properties, add a simple array modifier. And you can't actually often use relative offset of Z with planes because there's no geometry there. It's just a funny little feature. So change from relative offset to constant offset and just drag this value up and we'll make four layers. It doesn't particularly matter, but four layers is going to be fine. We'll also scale this up a bit, hit Control A, and apply that scale. And now you can see these have sunk down. So you can move these higher or lower if you want. It doesn't really matter. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to start setting up those fibers. So we're going to grab our plane, come to the Particle Properties tab, add in a new particle system, and we're going to use a hair particle system. We'll start by choosing Advanced, Source, emit from vertices, we are going to use both the modifier stack and random order. That means that we will emit from every layer in our plane and we'll kind of emit randomly. You can see right now if I tab into edit mode that I have 484 vertices in this plane and I have four layers. So this will not be filling in every single vertice. That's okay. I really don't want it to. In fact, I'm going to drag this number way down because that density is going to be too high. Now I'm going to come down to a few of these options. We'll start off with render. I don't want to render as path, which is what you see here. I want to render as collection. And of course, the collection that I'm going to use is the collection of polymer fibers. Now, there are a few little traits that I have to fix here. One is I want to pick random. That way I can actually use this seed value and it will change where these are. So I don't have to do too much work. I can just change between seeds. I also want to use object rotation. And obviously that may seem counterintuitive because this looked fine, but I actually do want to use the object rotation. It's going to be relevant for the texture. And I'm going to play around with some of these other settings. I'm going to increase the scale randomness, and I'm also going to enable rotation and change this phase value and randomize this phase. It doesn't have to be all the way. Anything is fine, really. Now, you may have wondered uh, if you don't have this rotation option, that's because you didn't click advanced. So make sure that you click advanced. And once that's done, we now have our last little bit of setup. So we're going to go ahead and hide the emitter and we're going to come down to viewport display and hide the emitter there as well. So now we just have all of these fibers. To get them to face in the right direction, we will simply grab our three fibers over here, hit R, Y, 90 degrees, and now you can see they're all kind of in this nice little tangled mess. Now we need these to be on a background and we can actually already start setting up materials. 
So we're going to hit Shift A again in object mode, add a plane, and just to make this organized, we'll call this background plane. I will call the first one fiber plane. Now our background plane is, if we come down to the material properties tab and hit Z to drag into material preview, our background plane is going to have to be big enough to cover the whole area. And it's going to have a very simple black material, the blackest black that you can have. So drag this slider all the way down, bring the specular to zero and bring the roughness to one. Then we're going to hit zero on our number pad. And that's going to show us sort of our fibers from the side view. What we want is from the top. So I'll hit seven on my number pad to come into top view and then control alt and zero to snap my camera to that view. SEM tends to have really good depth of field, so you can actually see everything in focus unless the object is really, really large. But for our purposes, we would be able to see everything. So we actually want to change our camera. So we're going to select the camera from our collection up here. And instead of perspective, we're actually going to change to orthographic. And this is essentially going to flatten it. I want my camera to also be a square image. And so I'm going to come to the output properties and just change this to 1080 by 1080. And now we have a square. And I'm going to hit G and X to move my camera over here, G and Y to move my camera just about there. I could also just hit G and then Shift Z and move my camera in that plane wherever I want, but this is fine. Coming back to my camera, I can bring this orthographic scale in or out. I do want to crop these kind of fuzzy edges, and this is actually going to give me the start of my fibers. If you find the fibers are too short and you don't like the way they're truncating, just go grab the originals and then scale them in the appropriate axis or axes rather. So S and Z and just drag it up and you can see some of those are getting longer, but some of them are remaining shorter. If you want some to be longer and some to be shorter, that's why you have the collection. If you duplicate any of these at any time, so shift D and Y, you can see this one is now still in that collection. And so I've just added another fiber that can be represented. All that to say, we now have the start of what we want. Now SEM has a very particular effect and it's that you usually will have a bright surface where there's high bombardment of electrons and a darker surface as it falls off towards the more conducting areas, i.e. this perfectly back black background. But if I want there to be some fall off, maybe because there's a charging effect or all kinds of other technical things you don't need to worry about, we're going to set that up with materials and it's quite easy to do. So we're going to zoom out here. I'm going to drag open a new window change it to a shader editor, and I want to be selecting a Bezier curve. It doesn't really matter which one, we're ultimately going to give them all the same material. And just so that you can see which one we're actually looking at and what this effect is, we'll come over here and we'll take a look at it. We're going to add a new material, and we do not want this principled BSDF, so I'm going to just hit X, delete it, Shift A, and I'm going to add in a shader, a emission shader. This white is almost correct, but not quite, so we're going to take this, plug it into the surface, zoom in, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, make sure I have Node Wrangler enabled. So come to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and just look for Node Wrangler. Make sure this box is checked. Once I've done that, I'll hit Control T, and that's brought up a number of things. I need this and this, so I'm going to change from UV to Object by simply left-clicking and connecting those. I do not need an image texture. What I need is a gradient texture. So I'll hit Shift S with this selected, and then I'll change from texture to gradient. Now you can see that this is creating this gradient in this direction. It's going from top to bottom, but what I want to do is go from side to side. If I hit N right now to open the side panel, I've rotated this. I'm going to then hit Control A, apply the rotation, and now you can see there's a bit of a soft gradient here. I want that gradient to be a bit more obvious, so I'll drag a box over these, bring them all out to the side, hit Shift A, add a converter color ramp, and put this right in place. I'm actually fine with using the linear default setting. I'll drag the black out just a little bit over here. And then if I drag this over so that the white comes a little bit more prominently, what you'll notice is I seem to not have too much control over this gradient. It's all black. That's usually something you can fix quite easily by just adjusting some of the location values in the mapping node. And so there we go, just pulling on the X right there. You can see I've now managed to bring this value up to about 0.12 and now I have much more control over this gradient. So you have dark on one side, which is exactly what I want. I want that to be falling away into the background, and I want something very bright in the front. So the white and the emission is going to give me something very bright. I can also change the strength of the emission to make it even brighter, and then pull it in or out to have a bit of a gradient. 
So very quickly, what we're going to do now is we're going to select all of our fibers by holding down shift and clicking each one. And then last, we will click the one that we put the material on, hit control L and then link the materials. So now you can see all of these have the same gradient. And again, they are doing the same thing. So we're going to shift select all of those, hit control A, apply the rotation. And now they all have that same gradient effect. Just like that. This one, you can see I did some unusual scaling, so it's a bit oblong, but that's okay. It's going to be crushed down in the orthographic view. So we'll come back, we'll look at our camera now, and if we zoom in, we can now see each of these is actually going to show that gradient. So if I drag this value in or out, you can start to see that becoming more or less obvious. There's an obvious dark spot, there's an obvious light spot. If you are finding that the gradient is not really fine-tuned the way that you want, then again, all you have to do is come to the mapping node and sort of manipulate this X value. It is very subtle, so you're going to need to be in about a 0.12 range. And then I prefer actually to use the color ramp to just sort of adjust the slider to get the look that I want. If I want to make this a bit more of an obvious effect so you can really see what's going on, we'll go ahead and we'll change the colors in the color ramp to something very clear. So blue and let's say... Uh, red for sake of argument. Now you can see that we actually do have a entirely blue bottom half to these fibers and if I move this red further away they become completely blue. If I move it close then just the tops will become red. I can also move the blue further back and so this is actually how you would get that effect. And if you wanted your nan nanofibers to have a specific color you could obviously do that but generally SEM is black and white so I'm going to stick with just black and white. And we'll drag that out just so we have a bit more of a subtle effect. You can also now play with these effects if you want. So if I had a mind to have them all look a little bit flatter, I could bring this in so that these two values are very close. And then I could use the black to be more of an edge almost like you see here. Just like that. And of course, I could also change the strength to make it a little bit less of a prominent effect. But once we've done all that, we can go ahead, hit zero, hit N to close this little window. We've got our material set up. We have all of our fibers in place. We can change them very easily by using the particle settings with seed for random to just get different fiber looks. We can use the number of particles to change how dense this is. All of these are options that are available to us. And from there, all we would have to do is actually go ahead and render. So I'm going to go ahead, change my camera. I'm just going to do one last little thing where I open this camera setting, viewport display, and come down to this option, which controls the opacity. I'll make everything dark and this would be the kind of final look that we're going for. So we'll go ahead and hit render on this image. And there you go, just like that, you would have the option for a SEM grid of polymer nanofibers or fibers of any kind really with control over how aggressive this charging white versus dark gradient is, what color you want them to be, how big the particles could be. Again, we can obviously change things like the scale or how big or small they are, how many we have, sort of what their random orientation is, all sorts of options. Very easy to do in Blender. And that'll wrap this up. So as always, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, hopefully use it to go make some figures. And until next time, you have yourself a great old day.